Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. He deserve it. He deserve it. Well, my little sister really made my day back there. She was just in it, in it, in it. And when the music came on, I said, cut the music. Boy, that seat back there is soaked with tears. I said, Lord. And I just thank God. I mean, this what that's what we need. And you know, we've been preached to, talked to, prophesied, but God looking for him to get some. He's looking for some true worshipers, you know. And Well, I said, I was just saying, Lord, I guess this got to be one of those times I got to be instant out of season. But I was saying, Lord, whatever your will is today. And boy, when the spirit caught that sister back there, boy, I, just, I couldn't stop praising God. I just couldn't. And it's just caught all over the church. I believe if the church was kind of full, we probably would have been still praising God right about now. And so God is looking for that true worshiper. He's looking for that true praise. And I just thank God and give him all the glory. He is worthy. He is worthy. He's worthy of it. We don't give him enough of it. I'm telling him we don't give God enough praise. Hallelujah. I know you do it at home at work, but we don't give him enough of it in this building. And he is worthy of it. We put his, his name is in this house, and we're supposed to lift that name up. Above every name, above all diseases and sicknesses, above all oppression, depression, everything. And I just thank the Lord for the, for the praise and worship service this morning. I thank God for his word. Also, his word is what is said it is. I mean, his word is, it, 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 his word will try you and prove to you what his word is. Well, I was so, I was telling him I was so mentally tired uh, last one day this week. And just, I mean, I told my wife, I got to go upstairs and lay down. I mean, just mentally. And your mind, boy, get tired, your whole body. It goes drag. And I said, I got to go lay down. Because a lot of times I lay down, I, I can think. You know, I don't be sleep, I be thinking. And man, I was so just, poof. I get a phone call. Somebody give me a word. And man, I'm telling you, say, let God, let God come forth. Let God do it. Just rest. And I mean, immediately. Man, I felt the virtue of God in my body, in this mortal body. I felt, I mean, through the phone, just immediately. Man, my spirit just perked up. You know, and I thank the Lord for the word. I thank God for the person being obedient. And calling me to encourage me, to lift me up. And man, I got up. I got to walking around. I went on in that room. I started praying. I started reading. Started worshiping God. Walking around. Just giving God glory. And I didn't lay back down until it's bedtime. And so I just thank the Lord for his word. His word is quick and it's powerful. It is. His word is true. His word is spirit. It's life. It's what he said it is. Just got to believe the word. Just got to believe the word, man. I mean, man, I thank the Lord for the word. Thank God for our pastor who allowed me to stand in her stead as always. It's a privilege and an honor. You all bear with me this morning. God is just a good God. I thank him also for just being trustworthy. I mean, God is trustworthy. When you can lean on him and depend on God and not worry about nothing. He's trustworthy. Why? Because I know God going to come through. I got four pair of glasses. And those reading glasses, I couldn't find all it. I couldn't find none of them glasses. But one pair. I used to go to work and I had to look in the computer and read the computer. And I said, Lord, where is my glasses? I said, Twan, I ain't seen none of them glasses you bought me. Normally have them all together like Fred Sanford and all in one draw. Man, I couldn't find none of them glasses. But I said, you know what, Lord? You said rest in you. I said, Lord, I need my glasses. I know that you're going to let me find them glasses. Get in the car. They look down. Stuffed down between the back of the seat. <laughs> One sitting in the, in the truck right there in front of me. You know, God let me find all four pair of my glasses. <laughs> but I said, Lord, I want to get rid of these glasses. Yeah, I want to get rid of them, Lord. I want to use what you gave me. 
my eyes so I can see. And I'm depending on God to heal my eyes. I'm going to get up every morning and say, Lord, I thank you for, for my eyes that I can see. I want to see clearly. And not only, and I, not only see in the natural, I want to see in the spirit. I've been crying out for the, for the gifts. But that, I just thank the Lord this morning. I'm not going to try to prolong the service, but God is so good. He's worthy to be praised. Thank him for the new addition in my family. They had another grandson, number nine. He's doing well. Him and mom, they're doing good, and God is just, just increasing the house. He's busting it out at the seams. <laughs> it don't seem like we, we threw. <laughs> but God is just a good God. I have no reason to hang my head. We have no reason to hang our head unless it's in reverence up to God. And I just thank him this morning. I want to thank God also for my wife. In her absence, who's been a help to me. You know, sometimes I have to be uh, transparent when it's time to be transparent. You know, it was a time I used to say, my wife said, man, she just a dependent, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, man, you know, not looking at me. You know, hey, you got some issues too, Brother Al. You know, but, you know, you get off into yourself. You know, but I thank God for my wife who's been what God says she is, my help me, not a dependent. You know, she's just been there for me, encouraging me, lifting me up with the word, with the word. And I just thank God for her and the children. I do. I thank God for the saints here at Revival Center and all those who have been cared. He said, well, can you get Brother Al's uh, address? She said, Brother Michael, you ain't going to believe this. Brother Al just asked for the church's address. <laughs> he said, what? Yep, so I want to go down there and see uh, the saints, especially Mother Williams. I haven't seen her in a while. You know, I'm just trying to talk to uh, Sister Harvey and Brother David in a while. I'm just trying to stay close to, to uh, God's people because I don't get a chance to go out and visit. I know we're supposed to be around God's folk everywhere so i just thank the lord I want, father i want to thank and praise you oh god for allowing me to handle your word again lord god i thank you god for the every opportunity that you give me lord not just in this building but every opportunity father god that you give me god outside of this building at work at home god in the streets god in the stores lord god i thank you lord god for filling my mouth but now lord i ask that you will fill my mouth god this morning god anoint me god for the time that you have allotted me, God, to speak, Lord. Speak through me, Father, I pray. Lead and guide me in this word, God. Instruct me, God, in the way that I should go. Father, I ask this only in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Give God a praise again. Give him one more good praise because he is worthy. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the, the word of God. Now, I didn't get a chance to title nothing, but this... Psalms 105 just come to my mind. And so I'm going to try to draw off the Holy Spirit, not Psalms 105. I'm trying to draw off the Spirit as he lead and guide me. You know, David is writing, telling of God's wondrous works here. And isn't it a blessing to be able to tell how wonderful God is? It's a blessing to tell of all his good works, his wonderful works, what he's not only done for me, I'm out there telling him what God has done for you too. Because if you get up and testify, if I'm around, God done something for you, I'm going to go and tell it. Because I know some people ain't going to be here to hear what God has done. So they need to hear what God is doing. So if you don't want your testimony out there in the street, don't say nothing around Brother Al. Because I'm going to go and tell it. Most definitely. People need to know what God is doing. You know, I know this brother, he's saying, man, I, I got that. I thank God that we have testimony service, you know, to tell the goodness of, of God, his wondrous work. David said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. And when you get to talking about God and all his wonders, it's hard to stop, you know. 
Especially if you've been in this thing a long time. You can talk all night, all day long about his wondrous works. You can get on some people's nerves talking about God. And I think some saints get tired of you talking about God sometimes. I be talking about the Lord and they, you look at them, you read them. Okay, it's time for me to stop. They don't, want, they, don't want, they don't want to hear no more. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. He's, David saying, seek the Lord and seek his strength. Not your strength. Not your brother's strength. Not your sister's strength. Nobody. No, don't, don't seek the, the, the strength of the flesh. He says, seek God's strength. And we know we serve a mighty God. We seek God in his strength and seek his face forevermore. And he says, remember his marvelous works that he had done, his wonders and judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He had remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. He said God has remembered his covenant. He ain't forgot about what he has spoken long time ago. He ain't forgot about his word that he spoke about you before you were born. God spoke of you before you were born. You know, that thousand generation. that's a generation that's going to keep coming and keep coming. It just ain't a thousand. He just said forever. You know, his covenant is forever to those that obey him. And so David said, remember his covenant. Some folk can't remember the covenant because they don't know what the covenant is. Got to get in there and find out what the covenant is. You know, a lot of folk got benefits. Don't even know what they got benefits for. You know, work with young men. We in the union. They don't even know what the union for. They don't know uh, what benefits they have. Guys can have children. They don't know that they get time off. They giving it to them, and you got to use none of your time. We got that. I said, man, you better look in that, that union book. Oh, saints, you better look in this book of life and see what you got coming to you. You know, the devil, try to, he'll try to take your gift. He'll take your inheritance. We got some, got some, got some Andre folk out there. You know, mom and daddy leave some money and you ain't knowing what you got left. Well, they ain't asked for it. Well, we just going to hold on to it until they ask. If they don't never ask, then, hey, we're going to dip into it. You got folk out there like that. The devil will do you the same way. You got to know what God has planned for you. You know, you got to know and say, remember his covenant. You know, which covenant he made Abraham, he made with Abraham and his oath with Isaac. And he confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. See, he, he, he made that covenant with Abraham. Then he, he, he made an oath, which is a covenant with Isaac. Then he confirmed this thing in Jacob. You know, it's, it's set. You know, I meant what I said. You know, I told your, your father, I told your granddaddy, you know, now I'm telling you, now you go and tell the people what God has for them. You let them know that they can uh, be saved. You let them know that they can come out of what they're in. You let, them know, you let them know that I do love them with an everlasting love. He said, it's been confirmed for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when they were but a few men in number. Yea, he said, very few. And strangers in it, <laughs> there were just a few of them came. I don't know, it was Jacob, his 12, 12, one, 12, some, it was 11 of them, because one was already there. <laughs> so, so, I mean, God already had this thing set up. You know, he said it was just a few. God don't, you know, he take a few people. He take this few little folk right here and multiply it. We'll be stretching out, lengthening our tents. Boy, if we have that spirit like we had this morning, a worshiping spirit, not asking God, Lord, why? You know, but thank you because, Lord, you've been keeping me. 
not why my children going through, why I'm hurting in my body, why ain't this thing came to pass yet, but thank you, Lord. Be appreciative of what I've already done for you. You know, you forgot about it. We just did it last, I just did it last week, but now you want something else. Keep thanking God for what, you already, what he's already done for you. You got to be appreciative. You know, you got children, they, you do something for them. Thanks, Daddy. And next week, they forgot about what you've done for them. They, that's, what, that's what we do. That's what children of Israel did. They forgot about God brought them out of Egypt. They forgot about how he kept them in the wilderness. They forgot all about that God was with them by day, by night. They forgot about how he parted the Red Sea. They forgot about how he caused water to gush out of the rock. People, I mean, how would you forget that kind of stuff? I guess because I'm in need or I'm in want of something else. You know, when you want stuff, you can't be always want. Lord, what you want? What you want for me, Lord? When was the last time? You know, God said, you know, say, look, Isaiah said, look, I, I, and I heard the voice of God saying, you know, who shall I send? Who will go for us? He didn't hear no crickets. He didn't get no silence. He said, then said I, here am I, Lord, send me. You know, what we want to do for God. You know, what is it that you want to do for God? Not God, what God wants to do for you. You're always asking God, you know, Lord, do this for me. Do that for me. Do this, do this, do this. Yes. Lord, what can I do for you? But that president said, don't want to ask what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. What can we do for this country? Amen, mama. Pray for it. You know, not always praying for mine. You know, I, I, I pray for my children, I do. But I don't pray for them often as I did when I used to. I find myself praying for neighbors, their friends, other families. You know, this young man, I got, couldn't get in touch with him. We've been missing each other. You know, I, I'm, I'm sure that the word God spoke over my children is going to come to pass. I'm confident, not in Brother Al, not in no flesh. I'm confident in God that my children are going to be saved. But why I'm confident in God with them, I'm seeking to do something for somebody else. I just believe they already saved. He said, look, I didn't, you said, I didn't come for those that are saved. I came for the ones that lost. It's people out there ain't never heard nothing about Jesus. They don't know nothing about salvation. They don't know how good God can be to them. Ain't nobody told them that. We was talking about this just, just I said, to the people's defense. People just, they, because you heard it, you bless. You bless when you hear the goodness of God. You're blessed when your mama, your grandmama, somebody and sow a good seed into your life. But a lot of folk, don't, they don't have that. They don't have it. And we're blessed. You know, we are blessed. You better say you blessed. I'm blessed. You better know that you're blessed. He said, but when they were just a few, there was just a few of us. It's a few of y'all, pastors, a whole bunch of y'all now. You know, God increased y'all. You got a whole bunch of folk in your family. <laughs> but it was just a few of us, just me and Tawan and Jabray. Uh, me, Tawan, Jabray, Al, Joshua, Tyler, and Savior. <laughs> And the grandkids. <laughs> you got, I got nine owls now in my family. It was just a few. Don't take, look, God can do what he want to do. God, God, mathematician is not like ours. God is a multiplier. Yes, see, he don't add. He multiply. When God give it to you, he, he give it to you, pressed down, shaking together, running over. You be wondering where all of these blessings are coming from. You better know where they coming from. They come from God. That's where they come from. And God ain't finished blessing you. He ain't finished blessing. God still got to do some work on you, though. <laughs> he got to do some work on you. He said from when they were but a few in number, very few and strangers in the land. We feel like strangers in this land sometimes. But when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointing, and do my prophets 
no harm. And so when you look at that, we always think of a leader. Touch not my anointing. Do not my prophets no harm. He said nations. He took these, this was a nation that he had. So it was just more than just the, the prophet, the apostle. It was a bunch of people. You are God's anointing. God anointed you too when you got saved. When you got saved, you got the spirit of Christ. It, he dwells in you. So when somebody touching you, you, they touching God's anointed. It's just not the preacher. You know, we set people up in places where it's just an individual thing. You're just, as a, you're just important as anybody that hold a microphone. God just chose the people that's holding the microphone to speak to you. So God said, don't touch my anointment, my anointed. And don't do my prophets, no, because y'all prophets too. Y'all prophesied, you know, prophesied this morning, you know. So you're prophet. You may not be the prophet, you know. And he sent men before them. Okay, now, moreover, he called a famine, called for a famine up on the land and break the whole staff of bread. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold, in, sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. Here it is, God saying, look, I sent this man Joseph. I, the Bible says he sent a man. Man, I'm going to try my best to spin off of that. He sent a man before them. He sent Joseph in that day to get things ready for them. He was sold as a servant, as a slave. And verse 19 says, until the time that his word came. Until the time, the time, a set time. That was a set time. He had a word set. He didn't even know he had this word set on him. There's a set time. God got a set time, a word, your word. The Bible says his word. God has spoken a word over your life. It may not be no prophet. It may not be no preacher. But God has spoken a word over our lives. And he says the word of God, the word of the Lord tried him. See, there is a set time that God wants to do some things. And look at here, and you know, when you got a set time you got something that's already been determined you know he told he told mary he told uh, uh sarah said you know at the time the set time of your life you know i'm gonna return and you're gonna have this child so that was a that was a time already been determined predetermined for you you got a predetermined blessing in your life you got a because god has spoke a word on on your life on your hook you got to worry about your husband you no, know, God got him. You keep on praising God like you're doing. You keep on worship, worshiping God like you're doing. Your husband's going to have to bow down. He's going to have to bend. He's going to have to say, yes, Lord. He ain't going to be able to resist the power of God. There's a set time, though. But you just got to, we just got to be in a place where God can use us. And he said, with the word, the word of the Lord tried him. See, God got that set time. For all of us. But the word of the Lord tried Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery. He was hated by his brothers. He was lied on. He was thrown in prison. He was left all alone. Sound familiar. Sound like this man named Jesus. His brothers hated him too. He was lied on. He was thrown in prison. It sound like Jesus, but, but God, that was a set time. See, a lot of folk think that because, I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, go ahead, Lord. Go ahead, Lord. A lot of people think that because that we are saved, we're blessed. God sent Joseph ahead to get things in order for his people. You know, he didn't know why he was going there until he got there. He understood, but, but Joseph wasn't. He was locked in prison. He wasn't down there moaning. He wasn't down there groaning. He wasn't down there crying. Lord, you said, you gave me a dream that I, my sheep was going to rise up and the other sheep's going to bow down. 
you, you, you telling me that this ain't going to come to pass? Joseph went down there like Joseph down there might have been, been a prisoner for no reason. Helping folk in the prison until his set time come. So a lot of times when, when Israel came into Egypt, they were blessed because Joseph was there. They came in blessed. But a lot of times we think because we are blessed, we ain't got to go through nothing. Because you go through trials and tribulations and tests, that don't mean you ain't blessed. Because you're hurting in your body, that don't mean you ain't blessed. Because you're afflicted, that don't mean you ain't blessed. Your children ain't all saved, that don't mean you ain't blessed. God said, what I bless, can't nobody curse. You can't curse it. So you're blessed even when you're going through. You're just blessed because God said, I bless you. And that blessing is just a favor for God. God give you favor. Joseph had favor in prison. He had favor with Pharaoh. God giving you, God has gave you fair favor. You got something. God did you a solid, as I say. And that's what the world say. You know, do, do me a favor, man. You know, back then we say, man, could you do me a favor? You know, mother. <laughs> Pastor, could you do me a favor? What's that, brother Al? Could you loan me $50? <laughs> You know how we used to do it? You know, could daddy, daddy, could you do me a favor? Could you loan me $50? <laughs> Lord, God, could you do me a favor? Could you keep my mind stayed on you? God, could you do me a favor? Could you help me, Lord, to seek your face daily? God has done us a solid. He knows that's what the world say now. He did me, you did me a solid, my brother. You did me a solid. God, don't, he didn't have to wake me up this morning. He didn't have to wake you up this morning, but he did. He didn't have to give you a right mind, but he did. He didn't have to give you all of your strength or a portion of strength or whatever you got, but he did. God did you a favor. God don't need you. We need God. We need him every day. We need him tomorrow. We need him next minute. We need God every day. We need him for what's going on in this world. We need him for what's going on in our lives. We need God. We need the favor of God upon us. And we got to start declaring the favor of God. Lord, I got favor. Not only favor, I got life and favor. I, I'm just ain't existing. I'm living. I got life. Things may not be going as well as I think they should right now but i got favor i'm blessed and i know i'm blessed i'm blessed beyond measure i know i am i know about nobody nobody i'm blessed beyond measure i was just taking a stroll in my house the other day just walking around i'm at home by myself because tawana she would out there so kobe was gone with the kids with, with, with his big brothers and it was just me myself i and the lord and man, I just used that time. I'm telling you, I walked the breath and I prayed. I turned the phone off. See, I, God is so good to where I don't care what situation, what, what circumstance you're in. God said you're blessed. He's going to start giving you gifts back. People been asking for their gifts, the gifts that you don't have. God finna start blessing his people because it's needed now. It's, need, it's been needed, but God, we're asking for them. A lot of times we want to ask him for the, the, the spiritual gifts. We're asking for the monetary gifts. Give me the money, Lord. Give me a car. Give me a house. But we done found out that that don't matter no more. It don't matter no more. I can have a house, but I ain't going to be in it forever. You know, I got to go to work and pay for this thing. But I need God. I need Jesus. I need his strength. I need his, I need his guidance. I need God. And Joseph knew that he needed God. And so he said, David said, the king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord over his house and ruler over all his substance. Man, I'm telling you, if, if, if David ain't talking about Jesus, I don't know who he's talking about. Yeah, he, he, this, is, this is a shadow. This, I believe this is one of those shadow of things to come. Joseph was a shadow of who to come. He made, he, Pharaoh made Joseph the prince and made him over, ruler over all his substance. God made Jesus 
the prince of peace and made him ruler over everything. All power was given to Jesus. Everything he sat on the right hand of, of the father and all power, all the substance belonged to God. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. It belongs to Jesus. He made him power over all of it. And Jesus said, look, what I got, I'm going to give to you. I give you power. You got power over the devil. You got power over the enemy. Can't no enemy stop you physically. He can lie and deceive you. He can, he can wolf all of that noise that will stop people. But when you know he can't touch you, man, you got power over all. He said by, he said, he said by nothing, by, by any means nothing. By any means. You know what? By I don't care what you come up with, nothing. What, what about this? Nothing. What about that, brother? Can't nothing. And a lot of people think you be boasting and bragging on yourself. Man, y'all just don't know who I'm talking about. Let me tell you who I'm talking about. I have to tell people all the time, man, it's not me. It's not my strength. It's not, I didn't get this wealth. I didn't get this stuff by my own. I'm just declaring what God has done for me. And they don't want to receive what God done for me. Well, that's your problem. But nothing by any means shall hurt you. He given you power over all the power. Of, he said all the power. And we forgot that we got all power. We got it all. He did Paul say all things belong to you. All of them belong to you. Even those tests and those trials. They belong to you too. But know that you can overcome. Know that you already an overcomer. And you already beat this thing. But you just got to walk the walk and not talk the talk. You've already beat it, but let me just walk this line, mother. Let me walk this line, pastor. It's already been done because he finished it. He finished. That's why I can walk this walk. That's why you can walk this walk because he finished it. It's done. And he said, and Israel came to Egypt and Jacob sojourned in Ham. And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. Man, don't tell me that you ain't strong. Don't tell me that, don't, you know, if you ain't strong, then you lying. You've been deceived. He made you stronger than your enemy. God ain't going to make you a child because you're, you're the image of your God. You're the image of your father. You got to bear what he bear. You got to be able to do what he said. He said, he said, not only these works, but greater works. Greater works. Not more power, but many more works that you're going to do. So you're stronger than your enemy. You're stronger than what you think. A lot of people think they just can't get through. They can't, oh, I just can't. You know, I, I hear what you're saying, but I just can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. If Obama, if oh, if Obama believed that things could change, he ran off a of, yes, you can. Yes, we can. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And you're more than a conqueror. Yes, you are through Christ that loves you. So he said he made them stronger than their enemies. You're stronger than that devil. You're stronger than that foe. You're stronger than that person that hates you on your job. You're stronger than them. You don't look at them with an evil eye. You be strong and say, hey, good morning. That kills them. A person right now. I know this. I see, you know what? I, I, I almost fell in that mold. That old Al mold. <laughs> old Al mold. I almost gave him a piece of my mind, Pastor. But I remembered what you said. See, you got... Man, it pays to be in the house of God. I don't care how many times you've heard that sermon. I don't care who preached it and what. It pays to sit on because faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word. I remembered the word. I remember, like David said, remember what God, I remember. You can't peace your mind out, brother Al. You can't, church, you can't peace your, I remember that. And I said, you know what, Lord, I can't peace this mind out. Because you know what? If I piece this mind out, it's got to be the mind of Christ. He said, let this mind that's in you, that was in Christ, be also in you. So I'm supposed to walk by, I'm supposed to do what the Bible tells me, the word tells me. 
See, a soft answer turns away wrath. Good morning, brother. He don't want to speak, but I'm going to make sure he speak. Hey, good morning, brother. That's what I, that's what I do. I want to make sure. I want to kill him with kind. I want to let him know, man, I ain't got no thing with you. I ain't thinking about you. you know, the, devil, the devil will try to get you riled up, get you in trouble. Then you're sitting there and everybody thinks, well, he's supposed to be a Christian. You know, you're bringing blasphemy, reproach to God's name. Man, I, I'm representing somebody here. And it ain't none of me. It ain't none of my wife, my children. It ain't, it's, the, it's the church. It's the church. I want them to say, well, he belonged to Revival Center Fellowship in a good way. I don't want them to say, well, he belonged to that little old church over there acting a fool. Over. <laughs> yeah, we can get radical for Christ, but we still love you. We can get radical for Christ, but we still going to tell you the truth in love. We can be radical for Christ. We got people running around here, jumping and shouting. It's going to get even better. But we still love God and we're going to keep his commandments. So he said he made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their hearts to hate his people, to deal subtility to his servants. He sent Moses. Don't be wondering about that. You know, turn his heart because his people get hard-headed. I want to clear that up. His people get hard-headed. Your kids get hard-headed, and you get a hard heart with them sometimes. It gets so hard to where you got to get that strap, but most of y'all don't get no strap. Y'all put them in the corner and say, time out. Count to ten. Just sit there. No. He said, <laughs> beat them. To deliver their soul from hell. We just studying this morning. If a person is unruly in the church, Paul was talking about excommunicating them jokers. You know? You know, so he said, deliver their soul, deliver them to Satan, that their spirit might be saved. When the devil get through with you, you're gonna turn to God. When the devil get through whooping your head, he's gonna do it mercifully. He ain't gonna have no mercy. He's gonna let you have it. He going to try to take you out of here. And when you see them folk that almost left here, that was the favor and the mercy of God. And some of them turn and some of them don't. So you got to train them up in the way they should go. And so he said he turned his heart because they turned away from him. You know? So I just want to clear that up. So why God? They always want to blame God for everything. Every time they see something on the news or something bad happen, well, my God let this happen. I don't see God in none of that wickedness stuff. You know, I see God in good things. You know, they just showed a bunch of men in North County uh, 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 congratulating them from being fathers. You know, which is good because we need fathers. But ain't nobody got to congratulate me. That's my job. You ain't got to pat me on my back. That's what I'm supposed to do. They didn't ask to come here. I'm going to take care of them. When God give me strength, he give me wisdom, he give me knowledge, he give me help. I'm going to take care of them, you know. But you need, we need men to stand up. They got to stand up. Even when you got some children, ain't got no fathers. And that's my heart's desire. I've been reaching out to these, these little places with the big brothers, big sisters. Man, I, got, I had a group of guys, still got a group of guys. Said, Al, you can find a place, man, we'll go with you. We just want to be some mentors to some young men. You know, we want to let them know. Ain't nobody forgot about y'all, but we need something to do. They need something to do. They got to teach them how to fish. Teach them how to do something. A lot of them don't know how to do that. They don't know nothing. I asked some young, young people. I said, man, you know anything about jacks? I said, you know anything about marbles? They don't know nothing about that stuff. Mama peg, you know, that kind of stuff. Horseshoes, washers. And it's a, it's a shame. All they know is, that's all they know. I know how to shoot that gat. I know how to sell that, slain that dope. You know, and it's a shame. The babies out the babies. Babies. Not the, the world won't call them men. They babies. 
They want to call them in. 13, 14 year old. They mean they know better. If you're 16, 17 year old, 18, you're still a baby to me. It's a shame. And he said he sent, he sent darkness and made it dark and they, rebe- and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and, showed their, and, and slew their fish. <clears throat> their land brought f- forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of the king. He spake and there came divers sorts of flies and lice. Y'all know the story about what he did in Egypt. You know, he brought all of those plagues up on. It's a, so amazing how God is. He brought all, they all living in one land, one piece of land. But God loved his folks so much, he brought all the plagues up on the people that got them bound over here. And they over here living real good, looking at all of that stuff. Ain't no plague, ain't no locusts come over to eat up none of their crops. Have you ever seen a rain across the street and not on your side? When I was a little boy, I saw them like, ran in the house, got everybody, come and look, y'all, look, look. It's raining over there, and it ain't raining. We're standing out the sun on this side and cloudy on this side. I mean, just across the street. Tell me God ain't amazing. Tell me God, if God can do that, oh, my God. Why, why are we without faith? Because you're without the things you need because we got the faith to believe for what we need. Got to have the faith. You know, God is just amazing and so he did all of these things for for his people I'm trying to get down to this scripture so I can let y'all go home praise God but he told Abraham he tried Abraham Abraham faith was tried when he offered up Isaac tell me that ain't trying somebody you know James said blessed is the man that endured the temptation For when he is tried, he come forth as pure gold and have a crown of life. But when we are tried, well, Job said, look, Job, let me get to my scriptures. I ain't using none of these notes. (laughs) Job, Job said that he know the way that I take. God know the way that we take. He knows our intentions. He know we're trying to follow him. He know. But he said, but when I'm trying, because when you're following God, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm learning, when you follow God, you're going to be tried. You're going to be tested to see what sort you are. You know, and, but Job said, when I'm tried, he said, then I'm going to come forth as gold. Now, they tell me the purest gold is 24 karat. It ain't mixed with no metal. It's just pure gold. You're going to be pure as that gold. Pure as that. When you tried, but you got to go through some stuff now. You got to have some tests and some trials. So remember after the day when you go through your tests and your trials, give God some praise. Just lift your hand and say, Lord, thank you. We bless you, Lord. You know, God, God, God got this thing set up and he told Abraham that, look, Abraham, your people are going to go through. They're going to go in bondage 400 years. They're going to be slaves. But he also told them, too, that they was coming out. See, God don't just send you through something and not have a way out. You're going to come out of that what you, what you in. Whatever that, 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 that the Lord has allowed you to walk into, God going to bring you out of it. And so he says in verse 37, after God brought them out, after he brought Job out, he brought you out of some stuff too. And he said he brought them forth also with silver and gold. And then he said this, I know. <laughs> and there was not one feeble person among that tribe. Here it is. they in, And all of that turmoil, all of that, 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 that bondage, how... How, how, how Pharaoh and the people just mistreated the people. All the stuff that you endure, all that you go through, your tests, your trials, kids getting on your nerves, you just wanting about your grandkids and your kids and your kids' kids and on down, all of that stuff. He said, now one, not one. That was some old folk come out of there. 
There was some old people saying now one was feeble. God said, look, I'm going to give you strength when you come out of the trial. When you come out of what you're going through, I'm going to give you strength so you can bear. Bear what? Bear the blessing that he said it came out with substance. God going to give you what you need when you come out of your test and your trial. So God has got your back. God sees what you're going through. You're blessed and not cursed. You're blessed and highly favored by God. So God got substance. He said, David said, bless the Lord who loaded us with benefit. Don't you know you loaded? A lot of folk don't even know they loaded. You loaded with strength. You loaded with favor. You loaded with praise. You loaded with love. You loaded with mercy. God has loaded you up so you can bear that stuff. He ain't raising up no feeble people. He said there was none feeble, young or old. Ain't nobody coming out of God's test and God's trial weak. When you come out, you're going to be strong. You're going to be like David. I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. I can take on that tiger and that bear. I can take on the world. I feel like when, when God stepped in me this one, one of these winds, and I just feel like, oh, man, I can just do anything. I feel like I can do anything. You got to feel like, not just feel like, you got to know that you can do all things. All things. So saints be encouraged. Know that God has blessed you and not cursed you. Know that God is going to bring you out. He's going to not only you, he's going to bring your children. Don't worry about your children. Don't worry about your, don't worry about your problem, your situation, your circumstances. Don't worry about it. Give it to God and give him some praise. Lay it at the altar and say, Lord, here this thing is. It belongs to you. We can't do nothing with it, no way. But go on. He blessed them. And I can go on and on and on what he did for them. But God wants you to know that you're blessed. And not cursed. You know, don't think about these fiery trials that you go through. They are fiery. Some of us are going through some fiery stuff. A lot of people don't know what other folk are going through. That's why it's good to praise God. That's why it's good to get here on Wednesday. I'm looking forward to work. I can get here at least two or three days a week. I mean, what, 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 what am I doing? You know, I can give him, y'all pray for me. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get mine back. I'm trying to get it back, what I had. Somebody here say, Lord, I want my gift back. I want my gift back, God. I want my dedication back. I need it back. And I know it ain't about what I do, but I just want to give it to him. I just feel in my spirit and in my soul that I ain't doing enough for my God. That's just how I feel. And I'm going to try to get over here some, some days that they just sitting around and they want to eat. I said, Lord, I'm going, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. And I found out some folk praying every day in the church. Six o'clock every day. God ain't moving. We come and give him a Wednesday night prayer and a sometime prayer on, on Sunday morning. What about them other days? Lord, help us. Help us, Lord. We need your help. We're crying out for help, but he said, y'all ain't down on his altar. We got to get together. We got to get it together. And we'll see God move. Because when they pray, fasting and they pray, they saw stuff. They saw things change. You know, the, the, the elders, they, when they did, they were always doing something. That's why God was always doing something. God ain't sitting up there. Look, God ain't going to move if our faith don't move. That's the only way we can move with this great God. That's the only way you're going to move a great God is with faith. So if you want him to move, Step out on faith. Challenge yourself. I ain't challenging y'all. I ain't telling you what I'm going to do. I'm saying what I'm desiring to do. I ain't calling nobody and say, look, meet me up there. And I'm doing it. I'm going to do it. This is what I feel in my heart. So you're blessed and not cursed. And know that you're blessed and God has given you favor. He's given you all the favor, all power over the enemy. God bless you this morning. Anybody need prayer? You want to stand for somebody else in prayer?
We will pray with you. We'll connect with your faith. Yes, we will. Faith moves God. Faith does. Only faith going to move God. We can say all the things that we want to say. If you ain't doing nothing, hey, ain't, it, James said you got to be a doer of this word. We got to, we got to be dedicated. Lord, give us our dedication back. Give us our desire back. There was a hunger and there was a thirsting in the church. Give it back, not just this church, the church, the body. Anybody else? What you need, sister? Um, I just came up here with me, but I guess. <laughs> she wants she want the microphone. Your sisters. Praise God. Lynn, Lynn, and MJ. Follow. MJ searching. He looking for God. But you know, there's so many rabbit holes to go down. So I was just praying the Lord put him on the right hole to go down. And you know, Leslie, she hurt. Yes, God. Lord. 
in the name of Lucy and let her go. Make it possible, God, for her to sit up so she won't have no excuses, God. We just pray for a light now, God. Keep her, Lord, God. Keep her, God, in the name of Jesus. Keep her, Lord. Keep her mind, God, in the name. Keep her mother, Lord, God. Let her mother, God. Let her mother begin to cry out, God. Oh, God, let her mother begin to decree and declare, God. Oh, God, healing over her child, God. Oh, she's the priest of our God, I pray, God, that the people, God, will serve you, Lord, God. Let them come, God, and serve you, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for the Lord, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, when we was, I was praying. that the people will serve God because when we were praying serving God came through a lot of people think because they say they serving God when you think about serving God you're doing something for God you know God serving you when you're just sitting there you know yeah you might be saved but the enemy is going to have a time with your mind he's going to have a time with your life you're going to be in struggle all the time and not knowing how to come out Yes, you're saved. I hope some are listening. You are saved. But you have to go out and serve God. You have to serve him. You got to wait on him. You got to do it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You got to serve him. Yeah. You serve him. <laughs> That be nothing else. We're going to dismiss. I just love the Lord on this morning. Give God some praise. Give him a, a healthy, healthy clap offering. A healthy one. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to stand and dismiss. I thank God for his word this morning. Thank God for the service before the word. I just thank him for his presence this morning. How the spirit come down in this place. Thank you, Lord. Do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. Do it again. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. Lord God, we lift up holy hands to you, Lord God. And we say thank you for being so good to us, Lord. Being so kind and merciful to us. Lord, we thank you for your patience, Lord God. We thank you for your word, God. God, we thank you for those that are standing in the gap for the others, Lord God. And we thank you, Father God, for your grace, God. It is sufficient for those, Lord. We pray, Father God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence. We ask that you go with us, Lord. Protect us, God, in the name of you. Cover us with your blood, God. Bring us back at the point in time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.